So cassowaries are known as the most dangerous birds on the planet, but despite this, they were actually the first avian species to ever be domesticated. Yes, I was just as confused and perplexed as you probably are right now hearing this for the first time. Believe it or not, many of the ancient tribes of New Guinea actually had a multitude of different complex relationships with each species of cassowary they came across, and in many cases they would actually raise up these birds in captivity for many generations, breeding them and using them for all sorts of different purposes. In some cases, a few of these tribes even keep cassowaries in modern day. So how does this work? And is it truly possible to tame these dinosaurs? So in case you didn't know already, the cassowary has quite the reputation. They are known for being the largest birds found outside of Africa, and they are also known for being one of the most aggressive avian species on Earth. So why would anyone dare try to domesticate such a creature? Well, you see, the reason's actually quite simple, and it has a lot to deal with the sorts of animals that were currently living on New Guinea at the time of human arrival. Most of New Guinea's fauna consists of a multitude of different dangerous reptiles, marsupials, and a massive variety of different birds, including this freak of nature. But what New Guinea and Australia lacked was a large variety of placental mammals, particularly ungulates, which are completely absent from Oceania. Sure, New Guinea singing dogs were brought over eventually, but for the first 40,000 years of humans being on the island of New Guinea, there were essentially no domesticated animals available for them to access. So instead, they'd end up trying to domesticate the local flora and fauna of the island themselves. This was essential for a lot of these New Guinea villages' survival, as most of the island is pretty hard to travel across due to its mountainous and jungleous nature. This essentially made it so that being a hunter-gatherer tribe in New Guinea's interior was far from easy, to put it lightly. So they decided to try to collect some of the local wildlife in an attempt to domesticate them, and one of the first animals they went with was the cassowaries. Cassowaries themselves belong to a group of birds known as ratites, and ratites themselves are actually actually really good for eating in that they have a good amount of meat on them and their meat is not just dense but absolutely delicious. On top of this, cassowaries are known for laying large eggs somewhat regularly during the breeding season, with females oftentimes laying clutches from multiple different males in one season. Because of this, in a lot of ways, their eggs were considered to be just as if not even more of a valuable food source than their meat. In addition to this, each species of cassowary, especially the northern cassowary, has their own unique feather ornamentation, with these feather ornamentations being quite desirable by many different New Guinea tribes, particularly for decoration and for ceremonial clothing. Heck, even the bones of these cassowaries after they pass have been known to make for quite useful weapons for many of the tribes of New Guinea. So overall, these birds can be quite useful, so it's no wonder that people would attempt to domesticate them. Yet that still raises the question of how it was achieved. In general, male cassowaries are known for protecting their chicks fiercely for the first 18 months of their lives. Because of this, what had to be done was that tribesmen would end up collecting the eggs of these cassowaries and taking them back to their respective villages to be raised up as adults. In a lot of cases, in order to calm these cassowaries down, villagers would purposely raise up these cassowaries as if they were pets, having them imprint on them from an early age. The problem with this is that once these cassowaries do reach full adulthood, their attachment to humans wanes down, as cassowaries themselves, once they do become adults, are entirely solitary, with the exception of males, which take care of the young for the first 18 months of their lives. For this reason, once they do become Become adults, they can become incredibly dangerous, and usually after they are bred, they are unfortunately put down in order to become a proper food source, unless of course they are being used for egg production. In turn though, some of these cassowaries, after being bred in captivity for so many generations, do end up taming down over time, making them easier to properly keep and raise as farm animals. Still, this only makes them semi-domesticated as they haven't changed significantly enough from their wild counterparts, at least when it comes to the southern and northern cassowaries. 
The dwarf cassowary, in contrast, is a very different story. Based on some archaeological evidence, it has been found that dwarf cassowaries have been raised in captivity for as far back as 18,000 years ago, which makes them predate the chicken and possibly makes them the first ever semi-domesticated bird. But there's actually an argument that this species might truly be fully domesticated. Unlike their larger northern and southern counterparts, the dwarf cassowary is significantly smaller and less aggressive, making them more ideal for captivity. They also tend to be a bit stockier on average, giving them a little more meat compared to other cassowaries when they are of a similar size. Each of these factors combined makes them essentially the perfect bird for captivity, mine as well all the other cassowary baggage. But a lot of people have suggested that these birds didn't evolve like this naturally, but instead their evolution might have actually been driven by humans. Based on the fact that these are by far the most commonly kept cassowary in captivity by these native tribes, it is very possible that these birds might have originally been created through selective breeding. This could explain their smaller size and why they are less aggressive towards people, but it also explains why these birds are so commonly kept in these native communities, yet are actually incredibly rare in the wild. That could possibly be because they were never originally wild in the first place. Overall, the dwarf cassowary tends to be found primarily in the New Guinea highlands, which just so happens to be where the farming of these animals would be the most necessary. Regardless, it could still be possible that this species evolved naturally over thousands of years without human intervention. It's just really hard to say due to just how isolated most of New Guinea truly is. Regardless, if this fact is proven to be true in the future, it would make the cassowary one of the first animals to ever be domesticated by mankind. Despite this, while this should be pretty obvious, cassowaries do not make good pets. Even after they imprint on a person or another animal, once they become adults, any sort of form of a special bond is completely gone and they can become incredibly hostile incredibly fast. The southern cassowary specifically has been known to kill people on the rare occasion in both New Guinea and in Australia, and they've also been known to kill people in captivity as well. Even though the southern cassowary is the third heaviest bird in the world and can get up to 200 pounds, that doesn't mean the much smaller dwarf cassowary also isn't more than capable of killing at the very least a small human. I mean, look Look at those claws, it's absolutely horrifying. In turn, this all just makes it more impressive how multiple different tribal communities were able to figure out not just how, but also when to take the eggs from these cassowaries and raise them up properly. In general, it's a common stereotype that a lot of these tribal communities are less intelligent than those found in more developed areas, and really, I feel like stuff like this proves that such a notion is far from truthful. While it would probably never ever actually happen, it is fun to wonder what an actual fully domesticated breed of cassowary would be like. But hey, at least for now we got three really cool dinosaur-like species of birds to talk about, not just in this video, but likely other videos in the future. By the way, if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, subscribe, hit the little hype button thingy, because it all helps my ego and it helps me to make some more money. And don't worry, I'll try to get back to making tons of animal documentaries every single week real soon. Goodbye. Bye.